Here we go again. Welcome back to Daylights in Space and part 7 of the uh, USS Voyager rebuild. Uh, made some fairly good progress on this uh, wee beastie of mine. Uh, we've got the inside of the ship completely light blocked and then um, we've then got a, a, a coat of matte white down on the inside. Uh, we've also got the photo etch for the uh, the windows in. The we've also got the um, SMD in there as well for the floodlight, um, just above or just be yeah just above Janeway's uh, quarters uh, for the registry. So that's in. That's good. Um, the only things that's left to do now for this is. Well, A, really, to get the anti-collision light in the front and then the two uh, navigation lights in. We also need to get the, uh, the glass in for the windows. Once that's done, we can then get the, uh, the rooms put in. But I'm not going to do that until such time that I've got my epoxy resin in. That should have come in last week. Um, last Thursday or Friday that should have come in, but I got an email to say that that's been delayed and it should either be today or tomorrow. Well, it hasn't turned up yet. I mean, there's still a few hours left in the day yet, so we can't say that it hasn't turned up today because there's the possibility that it could, although that's extremely slim. Um, so hopefully it'll be tomorrow. So once that does come in, I can get the rest of these bits buttoned up in here. Um, so that's looking fairly good. There's not really a lot left to do on the outside of this kit now. Um, yeah, that's pretty much well done to be fair. We've just got to see when we put the first layer primer down whether we do actually have um, any divots in the, uh, in the areas that I've been working on. Um, I will need to actually give this a quick sanding down just to smooth it all down a bit. Unfortunately, when I sprayed this, I did do it outside. Uh, and unfortunately, as is typical, the bloody wind picked up um, as I was doing it. So it kind of went underneath it a little bit as well, which is a shame. Um, we've also basically got the same done to the underside as well, all the lower section of the hull. So the only things that are left to do on here really again is put the anti-collision light in, the two um, navigation lights, get the glass in for the windows, then I can get the rooms in. Uh, and again, I just need to give this a quick uh, sand down on the outside there just to sort of smooth that out a bit. Well, there's not really a great deal of work that needs to be done to this. Um, so that bit's sorted, which is good. Uh, we've also, for the dorsal spine, uh, we've got the uh, the photo etch in place on there now, which is uh, looking quite good. Um, and again, we've got that sprayed down. Uh, we've done the usual sort of uh, light blocking and then the matte white over the top to help spread the light. So that's looking good. Um, that really is one of the last pieces that will be put onto the kit, really, to be fair. <coughs> the engineering section. Um, we got both sections um, sprayed down with the matte black followed by the matte white, so that's uh, pretty good. We've then glued the parts together, got the front in as well. This part still has yet to be glued down. I won't do that until pretty much well the end, really, um, as that's quite a fragile uh, joint there. I've also added a bulkhead to this. Uh, mainly to help stop the light from the blue LEDs coming through uh, into the main area of the uh, engineering hull. Um, 
I'm not sure whether I'm going to actually need to uh, light block this at all at the moment to be fair because it is fairly thick um, styrene and when I've put it up to me um, my bench light which is quite bright to be fair it was kind of glowing slightly but nothing special so I'm not sure whether I can get away with that I'll soon find out because I'll once I get to the point where I need to put the lights in there I can actually test it to see if it is going to come through and if it is I'll just light block it on this side and then spray it down in white again and then that should be uh, that should be fine uh, we've also got the SMD in there as well for the anti-collision light on the belly um, we've got the photo etch on the front there for the torpedo launchers the only bit of sanding down that I've got left to do really is this part here uh, where um, the deflector housing has gone in and we've had to get that as straight as possible unfortunately I got a bit too enthusiastic with the sanding down this side so I just need to rebuild the detail up on that side I might need to do the same on this side not really sure really until such time that we get the primer on there uh, we've also got all of the uh, underside details down as well now the only thing um, I found actually with the green straw well there's a couple of things uh, to be fair that I found with the green strawberry um, photo etch kit they don't come with the landing leg bay doors uh, which is a bit silly so I've nicked those off of uh, the old kit uh, basically sanded those down to get rid of all of the uh, the paint that was on them and then glued those on the white styrene stock uh, the, I've used basically um, the, the stuff that I used before was about a mil thick um, and I've used 0.5 this time which is a lot better to be honest it um, makes the detail look a lot better to be fair um, and obviously we've got the um, the detail put back on on the fan tail as well all I need to do on this part here is put an 8mm circle on this part and then on top of that I need to put uh, a 0.4mm circle on top of that then drill a hole through it so I can fit a, I do believe it's a, a 0.3 ball bearing is it? I think it's a point, it's either a point two or a point three mil ball bearing on there or something, something like that. And then I just need to then add a little bit more detail on there once that's in and that'll be finished off. So the underside of that's looking pretty good. The only thing that I need to do with this now really is put the, um, uh, the epoxy resin down on that seam just to help strengthen that back up again. And it will also help to uh, bury the uh, the SMD in there as well. Um, so by the time I come to put the strip of LED tape down there, I've actually got a cushion between the two so they won't interfere with each other. Uh, keep fingers crossed. Uh, well, they didn't last time, so I don't, don't see why they should this time. Uh, the other thing that I need to be done once all of those bits is done is to put the... Uh, the glass in, get the rooms painted and put the rooms in there as well uh, so yeah that's uh, that's shaping up quite nice now I'm, I'm, I'm liking the way that that's going the uh, warp pylons we've got the um, not that you can really see it to be fair uh, we've got the photo etch in there for the impulse intakes that's um, on both of them um, so that's there as well so I'm uh, quite happy with that one thing I have noticed though to be fair with the uh, the photo etch uh, if I bring the, the photo etch in um, there is a little bit of an inconsistency really to be fair um, well a little bit of a mistake in the instructions shall we say because part A um, is actually uh, for the bottom side of the pylons and part B is for the top 
if you try to do it their way, they're actually then facing off in the wrong direction. They kind of splay out like that, which isn't what should happen. Um, so if anybody's actually going to be doing this kit and they're going to get the green strawberry photo etch, just bear in mind that those two need to be reversed. Uh, it's a bit of a pain in the backside, really. One of the other things that I've noticed as well, and I've had to write off uh, to um, green strawberry or email green strawberry, should I say, um, because I'm just flummoxed at the moment. Um, part B um, on this uh, instruction on step eight, part B is. Um, well, sorry, the yeah, part B really is, so with part B, you use uh, number 83 of, of the uh, the photo wet sheet, uh, along with the forced, pers uh, forced perspective room, um, if you're going to be doing it that way. Um, the only problem is, although, yes, that window is part 83, on the sprue, it's uh, sorry. On the uh, the photo etch sheet itself, number eighty three does actually correspond to um, another part or another two parts. They're very small rectangular parts. I think they're about two millimeters long by about a millimeter wide, uh, with three um, circles in them. The only problem is when I'm looking through the instructions those two smaller parts I can't find anywhere on the sheet at all. Um, so I've got absolutely no idea where they go to. Um, so I'm actually hoping that um, uh, that uh, Green Strawberry come back to me as quickly as possible on that. And then also on top of that, on the uh, photo etch sheet, Again, um, you've also got two items that are numbered number 63. Again, they're very small parts, most probably about the same size actually as the last ones, um, except for they've got two holes driven right through them. The only problem is number 63 is absolutely nowhere at all on the instruction sheet. So where they go, I've got no idea. Um, so hopefully um, somebody within uh, Green Strawberry will come back to me as soon as possible. Um, I have actually um, emailed it and, and marked it as high priority and asked them for um, a, a, a prompt answer on that one. Uh, but as soon as I um, find the answer to that one, um, I will uh, let you know what their answer is. Um, so yeah, that's just a couple of things to beware on those instructions if you're going to be using the green strawberry uh, photo etch for uh, the Voyager kit. The only other couple of things that we've got really left to um, do any sort of meaningful work on um, are both of the um, warp nacelles. But again, not really a great deal of work that needs to go onto these. Uh, the only thing that I'm going to need to do on the inside is make a bulkhead to separate the um, chiller grills from the facade scoops um, so you don't get that kind of purple bleed going anywhere uh, and then I just need to put the details um, around there still need to actually look to see if um, there are is some scraping that needs to be done on those um, we'll soon find out I'm not really too worried about those really because that will only take a couple of minutes the fan tail itself um, We've been working on the photo etch, so we've got the photo etch in on the top and also the uh, the bottom of the uh, the fan tail there. So th the other things that need to be done to this is basically get the uh, the SMDs in there for the navigation lights and the anti collision lights. Um, been working basically on getting the um, shuttle bay in. What I've had to do is basically file out half a mil oblong there um, to actually get the the shuttle way to sit down properly. There is actually a slight step at the bottom there, um, and I don't know if that's really going to show up on camera. To be fair, 
but there is a slight step on there and without actually filing that bit down it doesn't sit um, on this part at all well and considering that these parts are actually quite fragile you do really need to get that out so when you put that on it's actually going to stick to both parts properly also really from the point of getting it in there and screw properly so you know it's not going to move you need to do that really to be fair uh, I've also uh, been working on this part as well trying to remove as much of the um, 3D printing lines on this as well as much as possible really it seems fairly smooth but only a layer of primer is going to be able to tell me how smooth they are the other thing that we've been working on as well is uh, basically getting the whole um, put in here for the um, for the um, uh, what do they call it again I suppose the crew room, the rest room, whatever you want to call it, uh, dining room, come everything, observation room, everything really, for the rear fan towel. So that's in. That's unfortunately gone a little bit lopsided on me. So I'm going to need to add a little bit of material back into this side um, to get that to that back to where it should be. Because unfortunately, the way it is at the moment, it kind of makes it look as though the uh, anti-collision light on that side is actually off-centered when it's not um, it was just me hogging out too much material on that side but again that went it's not the end of the world really to get that sorted to be fair the only thing that the only issue that I do actually have there to be fair with this room is when this is actually in like so um, it's actually going to have the anti-collision light basically in uh, that observation room. Um, so what I'm going to need to do, where the hole is, I'm just going to need to get uh, a bigger drill bit and then just hog out some more material there so I can just basically get the, um, the SND to sit in the hole and then I can cover that up with a little bit of putty which are then actually help light block it so I'm not going to get flashing lights in the uh, in the room it's not the discotheque room that's for sure um, and the other thing I'm going to need to do as well because the uh, the walls of this room uh, by the time you've got the top and the bottom together um, that is basically sandwiched between both parts um, so there's no room then for lights to go in so what I'm going to need to do is uh, basically bury a couple of um, SMDs, uh, the uh, warm white SMDs into the um, into the top of this section there. Uh, so we have got some light in there. So you can see the uh, the little tables and chairs and whatnot are in there. Um, and then just really dim those down with a massive, um, well, not a massive resistor. I think that's you know a bit of an exaggeration, but. Uh, I think we're looking at at least a 5.7k resistor to get those lights um, down to where we where we need to get them. But that, for the moment, is about where we are um, on this kit. So we are making quite a bit of progress, which is great. Um, still a fair away um, from actually buttoning this kit, kit up completely, as we're still waiting for a few bits to come in. Um, so we can do that nicely um, but yeah it's just a bit weird as I say with the um, with this epoxy resin it's uh, coming from somewhere within the UK yet it's been delayed by at least a week by now um, yet the number 11 blades from a knife that I bought from China was about 150 blades I bought from China um, and they were slated to come in by the end of um, August and they've just come in today and it's the 26th of June today um, so it just don't make sense I mean how the hell can something that you order in UK that's only just down the road be delayed by a week yet yeah, something that's coming all the way from China actually came in a month before it should have done 
Um, yeah, that's a bit weird. I don't understand it myself, really, to be fair. But hey ho, never mind. It's just the way that goes. Um, but that's going to be about it for the moment, guys. Uh, when I've got some more work carried out to this wee beastie, I will come back to you.